May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Cuke Audio phone chat. I'm DC Booba of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives, tucked away here in Sleepy Sanur with Doggett Bandita and Feline Cuchita, but without dear lovely Katrinka, who we hope to see before the summer's over. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable and able to get out and do anything you want while following the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. Uh, today uh, we'll be speaking with Mel Weitzman, Abbott, for a little while longer, <laughs> of the Berkeley Zen Center. This is Mel's third uh, appearance uh, in our podcast. He was in the the second one, it, and that was like my first and my second recording. I had called Paul Disco a little while earlier, and then I called him, and I wasn't even using the mic. It, I I didn't even know I was recording. But it, were, it sounded all right. Uh, and um, that was neat. And just talked about some of the uh, editing work he's doing with uh, Shunyu Suzuki lectures. And then in uh, the podcast of uh, Chapter 5 of Wicked Cucumber with Comments, he's in there too with uh, another 10 or 20 minutes or something, which is actually from that first recording. There was just more I took out because every conversation with Mel is uh, full of jewels. <laughs> so before we talk with Mel, let's pause to meditate. So when you hear the bell, hit pause. Meditate for as long or short as you like or don't. And then hit unpause and we'll hit the bell to signify it's time to move on. So let's just get into it. Let's call Mel up. We won't beat around the bush any longer. Hello. Hi, Mel. David. Hi, David. How you doing? Okay. 
How did you sleep last night? Well, let's see. How did I sleep last night? <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. I usually sleep really well. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. I, do, I go to bed and I just conk out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I understand. Yeah. Uh, so, if you don't mind, I would really like to hear... Well, let me just ask... Where were you born? Oh, <laughs> I was born in uh, Los Angeles County Hospital. Oh. 19, 1929. All right. July 9th. Oh, July 9th. July 9th. I have, uh -huh. I have one month, and I'll be 91. All right. All right. Uh, cool. All right. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, I admire you. That's great, um, and you're you're my role model. <laughs> and uh, let's see, that's six. That that would be sixteen years from now. Uh, uh, for me. Uh, oh. <clears throat> uh, and did you uh, grow up there? Well, I grew up in Hollywood until until um, the war. Mm. In '41, we moved. We moved to Long Beach. Uh huh. What What did your parents do? Oh well, my dad. You know, it was. This is the um, the Great Depression. I brought in the depression, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and my dad worked at various jobs. You know that he could WPA. You know, and thank goodness for Roosevelt. Yeah. You know. And he worked in the shipyards during the war. You know what I remember hearing about WBA? What? We piddle around. Okay, we piddled around, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but go on. Oh, okay. So the, so um, that's what he did. And then he, he ended up working in a, uh, a clothing store selling clothes. Mm. And the store was always going out of business, you know. So it was always everything was always on sale. Ah, yes. <laughs> I've seen that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, we always had a place to live and and good food, and uh, we were brought up, uh, you know, in an honest way. Mm-hmm. What, so, what was the religious orientation? Well, you know, my um, folks were not religious. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, but they were cultural, but they were not religious. They were somewhat cultural. Yeah. Cultural Jews. Yeah. And uh, they never went to the synagogue. I never don't remember ever going there. No bar mitzvah. Yeah. No, no bar mitzvah. Uh huh. <laughs> All no. right. But um, I w I was always interested in in uh, religion. Uh huh. And I miss I missed not not having that. Actually. And then uh, you know I, I graduated from high school in nineteen. 47 mm. went and went into the on active duty with the Marine Reserve mm. and then when I got out I got the GI Bill uh, where were you while you were in the Marine Reserve I, I was actually in, in Southern California mm -hmm. for how long a little over a year and a half uh-huh uh-huh and I was an uh, um, aircraft mechanic. Oh, neat. Yeah, I would start up these. I had two planes that I was taking care of, and I would start them up every morning. Oh. Take care of them, make sure that they were, that they were uh, in, uh, flyable. Uh-huh. And then the pilots would come and uh, fly them. That's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. We were really young kids, you know. Wow. 
17 years old, 18 years old. So you enlisted? Yeah. Well, yeah, it was after the war, you know, because during the war, I, you know, all the kids wanted to be in the in the military. Yeah. But after, I, I and so I joined the, the the reserve. Yeah. In high school, and then I went on active duty after that. Oh. So, took care of the airplanes. Oh, neat. And then I went to art school. Where? Well, first in L.A., called the California School of Art. Uh-huh. It was a new school. And then I, my friend, a couple of guys took me to uh, San Francisco to go to the um, Art Institute, what's now called the Art Institute, you know, oh, on uh, uh, Chestnut Street. It used to be called the California School of Fine Art. They changed the name to Art Institute. And now it's, I think it's, it's almost defunct. No. It's a great place. Yeah. No. So, uh, yeah, I had some really good teachers. I studied with Clifford Still, who uh, was a great innovator. Uh, then I was an artist for a long time until I, um, uh, somebody took me to um, Sokoji. I was living in the in um, well, actually, I was. Um, oh, well, there's, a, there's a lot of water under the bridge, <laughs> but <laughs> I had a wife. I got married. Ruth to, to this poet, a poet, Ruth. Uh, Ru Ruth Weiss. Yeah, and she became well known. She's travel. They they you know travels around the world. Mostly in Europe now. Oh, I don't know how she travels, to tell you the truth. What, she didn't travel with you? No. Well, we went to Mexico. That was great. We drove all the way down yeah. to Mexico, all the way down to Guatemala, when there was just a one-lane road, two-lane road. Wow. And we went through every single Peblano. Wow. That was great. People would invite us in, you know, and... I thought we were Europeans because we didn't act like Americans. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, you were early. You were like Bohemians. Like, yeah. Well, you know, I've been writing a. a uh, I wrote a little, a, a short little thing called uh, "Beat Zen, Square Zen, and Zen," and about yeah. being being a Bohemian. I was the last ah. of the bo I was the last of the Bohemians. <laughs> That's neat. That's neat. But wait, before you go to Sokoji, you you were a musician too. Well, you know, I played. I I I wasn't really a musician. I was, you know, we had a bunch of guys that would get together and and play music, you know. But I was not. A, I wouldn't have called myself a musician. I'm more. Of a, I'm more of a musician now. Yeah. Because o over the years, I've really I've learned how to play music. But, yeah. you know, we just ju kind of jumped into it. And we'd rent these instruments. There, there was a place on Market Street, San Francisco, uh, um, a music store, and the, and the owner rented instruments. Was so it called Satterley and Chapin? I can't remember the name of it, tell you the truth. could be. Yeah. It was old. I used to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there were so many music stores, you know, at that time. Oh, oh it's incredible. Yeah. You know, they're, and they're all gone, every one of them. Uh, um, you were see the one one thing I remember about you back then is you played with Terry Riley. I did in, play on C, a very in, very in, famous yeah, piece in C. Yes. NC, NC. Yeah, yes. You know, um, there were a number of us musicians. Some, some of them were really good musicians, I have to say. Uh, but we were just playing, you know, uh, uh, improvised music. Mm. And uh, Terry was one of them. And 
uh, uh, we were hanging around Bernal Heights and, and the mission, and um, uh, Terry and I would play certain things, and uh, he wrote this piece called In C, which was simply the piano player playing C <laughs> as a bass, right? And uh-huh. and he just did the did the C, bum 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 all the way through, and then yeah. th- there was a progression of uh, for the other musicians um, coming in at various times on the same theme, so that uh-huh. would you know it kind of make a rich mixture, and uh, so he wanted to be able to, to include any any musicians from any. Uh, musical background <laughs> so that everybody could play the same music, right? You didn't <laughs> have to be from any particular uh, country or whatever. And I thought that was yeah. just the greatest idea, you know. And yeah. so we had three, of, there was about three other guys and we would play and then uh, he made this tape or the or this um yeah I guess it was a tape yeah uh this a concert and um you know eventually uh I lost contact with him but he, he I took I, I I don't like to tell this story but um I took him to Sokoji I had just kind yeah. I I just kind of gone to Sokoji a couple of times and I said, you, you know, you should come here with me. And he, he wanted to do that, so I took him to Sokoji. And uh, after sitting one period, he, he had to crawl out on his hands and knees. <laughs> <laughs> and he never came back. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good story, but it, I, I don't want to embarrass him. Is he still with us? No. 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 Yeah. He did come right. to. He, uh, I, he came to a uh, some kind of thing at Green Gulch some year, a long time ago, and it, there was a um, a meme there who was doing. Mm. It was some kind of a party, you know. The meme came to the party, and the meme was. Um, uh, did a little skit where he, he put another leg <laughs> in, in his uh, from his waist down, so it looked like he had three legs, and so he was doing this act and walking around on three legs. It was very funny, and then he and I got oh. into something, and we, we were doing an improvised thing, you know, and it just kept going on. And Yvonne, she said, "Did you guys plan that out?" I've never seen the guy before, <laughs> and she oh. says, "Well, well, I think only you could have done that." <laughs> wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, so, how, how did you get to Sokoji? Okay, so I don't know if you, 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 I don't think you ever knew this guy named Dan Moore. Oh it, yeah. Oh, did yeah. you know him? Yeah. Well, he and I. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I, he. Ma- I, I. I. Yeah. I've met him. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he would come over to Loring's, and uh-huh. he used to come into Page Street sometimes. And I, I have a, That's right. you know, he's. I have uh, interviews uh, with him and a, a, a page for him on Cuke.com. Oh yeah. Very nice interview. You know, he uh-huh. became a Muslim. That's right. Yes, he became a Muslim. So he and I. And my wife, Ruth, and he married Diane Varsi's sister. Mm-hmm. She was an a actress, a young actress, who was the star of Peyton Place. Oh, right. Well, I didn't remember that. <laughs> yeah. And, and, right. and so we hung out with her and her sister, and Dan Moore wow. and my wife and me. And, uh, you know, she quit Hollywood because she couldn't take it. And so mm. she she liked us, and and we were you know uh, pals for a long time. 
but um, so Dan married her, and then I was living in this little house in the middle of the block on Divisadero Street. It wasn't Div- well, Divisadero and uh, what's the name of that other street? Anyway, um, so one day, and then I, Dan inherited the house from me. And then uh, he, we used to sit up, you know, sometimes in the evening and smoke pot. And yeah, that's he, what he did, man. <laughs> he did, yeah, he did. And <laughs> and then he said, you know, I go to this uh, Zen temple, Sokoji, on Bush Street. And so that night, well, actually, it was early in the morning, we, we uh, because they used to sit at five. And we, uh, well, actually, Suzuki Roshi said at 5.30 or 5.45 or something like that. Uh-huh. It wasn't until later that they started sitting at 5. Uh-huh. And, uh-huh. and and he took me, we walked up Fillmore Street and, and uh, to Bush and then went to the Sokoji. I had my little black dog, India. And um, uh, wow. that was my that was my introduction to uh, Sokoji to you know, and then I, wait <clears throat> wait you you brought I remember India yeah yeah That's, yeah and and you brought India to Sokoji with you well I mean you know she was my dog I didn't know where I was going <laughs> oh I see. She just kind of tailed, always tailed along with me wherever I went. I found her on the beach, you know, at um, uh, down the coast. Oh, Some, okay. That's another you know, story. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want to hear that. Um, but but wait, I see. I was picturing you walking up Fillmore at five in the morning to go to Zazen. Yeah. I mean, at five thirty or whatever to yeah. go to Zazen. Yeah. It, it, really. Yeah. With your dog? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> and Dan, the three yeah. of us. <laughs> and yeah. uh, um, and then so we sat down, went into the, the Zendo and sat down. And then somebody came up behind me and adjusted my posture and put my hands in place and uh, told me where to look and so forth. And so I did that. And that was my that was Suzuki Roshi. He came around, did that, and then I, uh, there I was, all by myself, so to speak. And that was nice. I liked it. It was like, yeah, this is this is great. So I I took to it right away. Um. All right. I have two questions here. One, okay. can you date that? Uh, yeah, I think it was September or October, 1964. Mm-hmm. And where was your dog when you were in the Zendo City? I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. Would you have left her outside? Probably, I, I guess so. I, I just have no re- I sometimes think about that. I thought, where where was she when you know I went to? <laughs> I can't remember. See, you know, look, you, the way you told it, right? You're walking was... over there with your dog, and then you said the three of us, and then you said, and then we were sitting on cushions. So I saw uh, India sitting on a cushion in the Zendo. <laughs> well, I you know when I, when we first moved into Dwight Way in Berkeley. Uh, we were sitting downstairs, and uh, the cushions yeah. were around the wall. And um, sometimes she would uh, uh, go to sleep on one of the cushions. Oh, that's neat. Somebody came in one time and sat down on her. <laughs> oh, that is funny. <coughs> yeah, that was really yeah. funny. Hey, well, I have a question about that. Now, there was this gentleman downstairs who was in a wheelchair. Oh, right. The, these people, well, 
this guy in his, I'm trying to remember his name. I don't remember his name. But uh, he and his wife lived downstairs. That's correct. And then he went out by himself, or I can't remember. It must have been by himself, to the desert and died. Yeah. Well, I do, do you think he drove himself? I hear friends helped him. I have no idea how I, he got there. Now, here, here's the way I heard that. I mean, and I don't know who told me how long ago, but the image uh, certainly sticks in my mind that he was left in the desert by friends. Maybe he drove himself out there uh-huh. and, and got out of his car, but that his body was found uh, sitting in his wheelchair, blackened, blackened by the yeah. Uh, sun. Yeah, something like that. I think that's true. Wow. Yeah. That's one way to go. It is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's that's unique. I can't think of any story ever to come. Well, I don't know. Probably yeah. find it is creepy. Like, like some ascetics in the deserts or something. But anyway, yeah. all right. So uh, you're... You're sitting there, uh, and uh, at Sokoji, and you took to it. So, um, yeah. Hey, well, would you tell yeah. me how you found your dog? How, how did you find India? Well, um, let me think a little bit. <laughs> Is that a dog? That's my dog. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of a I dog? Should close Is that? The, I should, so the, that's a little. She's like a Pomeranian. Yeah, sounds like a small dog. Yeah. Uh, uh. So anyway, I I was, I think I was um, in unlucky in love or something, and I didn't have anything. And I um, moved somehow. I used to go down the coast to um what's the name of that beach uh down the coast not too far Give me a hint <laughs> um half moon bay yeah half moon bay around the ha- a little further down than half moon bay and then the um um uh, i used to go down there a lot and there was a guy there who i made friends with he was a very interesting guy, and um, uh, he left me. He was staying in this um, crab shack mm. at, on the beach. He was in a similar state as me, kind of respo- <laughs> de- despondent, <laughs> um, and he left me the shack. Which was nothing wow. but a, but you know, totally um, nothing was inside the shack, <laughs> you know, except uh-huh. some uh, a, a cot or something like that, you know. So, and then there was this little dog, India. I think it was his dog, but he, you know, he left for other places, and and I adopted the dog. And we lived down there, Half Moon Bay, sort of, um, for a couple of weeks. And then I moved back to uh, San Francisco with the dog. And the the dog was, you know, one of these dogs that they just pick up on you right away. You know, you don't have to train them or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah. So that was how I got hold of her. So it was really nice because she was a nice companion. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah you know, Katrinka's in America. It's nice having Bondi. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Here, I've, I've got a dog and a cat. Uh huh. And with well, Katrinka in America, they sort of latch on to me. Yeah. And then. I took Bondi to a kennel the other day. I mean, I didn't take her. I just called a driver and uh-huh. had him pick him up and take her there for a couple of days so she could play with other dogs there and get uh-huh. uh, 
they they do grooming. It's very cheap, very very cheap here. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing was two ten dollars. Wow. It's very nice place. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I missed her. I went. I went. I. <laughs> <laughs> I missed her. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So hey, so you started sitting at um, so Kochi. What did you have a job at that time? I don't remember. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Well, yes, I did. Matter of fact, when I, w w yeah, when I started sitting, I was driving cab. Oh, I I drove oh. cab for six years. Oh, off really? and on, yeah. I started out with, I started out with yellow. And at that time, yellow cab, you had to uh, um, dress up like um, wear a suit, no mm -hmm. beards, no beards, and 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 uh, no sh no. I guess you could have a mustache, and you, you know you're supposed to look like match your um, clothing with the ambiance of the upper crust. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, you you know you're supposed to be a representative, a, a presentable person, right? Yeah. And then they taught us how to uh, get people in and out of the taxi. They gave us a test, you know. They 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 uh, little interview or review or whatever you call it, you know. So um, uh, I learned how to do that, and then I worked for DeSoto. I went to DeSoto, which was really a good cab cab company because it was owned by the drivers, and oh. and they let me work part time. I couldn't work part time for for yellow. So wow. they let me and I would just walk in whenever I wanted to go to work and and there's always a cab, you know. I was like the guy that, that uh the extra guy, you know. Who yeah. when when somebody didn't show up I'd I'd show up. So uh it was a great job. It was it was a really great job because I could just go in whenever I wanted and make you know a little money to keep to keep going, right? I never knew how much money I had. I just had some money in my pocket. As long as I had something in my pocket, it was, it was good, you know. <laughs> Rents were cheap, you know. Food was yeah. cheap, and yeah. you know, I didn't care about money because I was brought yeah. up without it. And I knew how to, how to, uh, you know, um, uh, live without money. So uh, mm. I learned. Actually, I learned how to be a monk. <laughs> mm. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's how I, that's what I was doing. I was driving camp, so I, I, I drove at night. So I'd get off uh, very late at night, uh, probably early in the morning, and then go to go to uh, Zazen in my suit. Hmm. Hmm. It was nice sitting in my suit. I have to say, the pants were nice and soft and. You know. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and when did you move to to Berkeley? Well, um, you know, I was living in Marin for a long time. No, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, I worked in a boat shop, the Nunes Brothers Boat Shop, which was at the bottom oh. of a Hurricane Gulch, next to this uh the Valhalla was a restaurant oh, yeah. and the Valhalla was run by this woman who who, uh, who was a former madam and i think the Valhalla uh -huh. was probably a, a, a whorehouse before it yeah. was the restaurant so the boat shop was right next to that and so i was a see I, I, um when i was in art school uh a friend of mine and I uh, got a job house painting, and it, it, we became journeyman house painters because they needed painters. 
and uh, and we were earning two dollars and forty five cents an hour, which was a wow. lot of money. It was a lot of money. What year? What year? Nineteen sixty five or six or something like that. Mm. Yeah, and it was fifties, uh, early fifties. No, no, you just said sixty five. Fifty five. Did you say fifty five? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these were right. early fifties, early fifties. Oh, okay, okay. And, and so I lived in Sausalito for a long time. And then I the moved Valhalla's to, in, in Sausalito, right? Well, it was. I, I don't know if it's still there or not. Yeah, it was in Sausalito. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think it's still there. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with the name. I don't know if, if I actually saw it. Huh. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Wait, yeah. so when you first came to Zen Center, you were living in San Francisco, and you started sitting. So how did that develop? Any... Any particular well, the, memories? Yeah. So the, um, uh, I was doing house painting and, and well, I was driving the cab. That's right. I was driving the cab. And, and then what happened? <laughs> well, oh yeah, uh, I had a girlfriend in who mm. lived in who li who. I met. I was in a music store, and we were both looking for music, and she kind of seduced me. And and I went to her place in 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 uh, Berkeley, and then we started living mm. together. Oh, what was your name? Her name is Robin. Hmm. She was a child entertainer. <laughs> She died a couple of years ago. Maybe, oh. maybe yeah. Um, but anyway, she, uh, um, so I kind of moved in with her. So, yeah. And then I, I, I would go to Sokoji in the morning. I would drive to Sokoji in the morning. And so I think I, I, I met her probably in, uh, 52 or 53 or something like that. Right. Wait, wait, Mel. You you weren't driving to Sokoji in 52 or 53. No, no, no. Uh, that's right, because they started practicing in 64. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, 64, probably 66 or 60. Yeah, before, uh, yeah, 65, I think it was 60, somewhere between 65 and 66, 65 yeah. and 66, because we went to Hawaii together. Oh, neat. She, somebody invited her to, you know, we went to, I, I, I taught summer school uh, in Hawaii, and we were in the big island. And she yeah. and she taught, you know, she did paper cutouts and stuff like that, and and taught music to little kids. And I yeah. actually got, I went to work uh, with a class of very young kids. And this is an interesting yeah. school, um, uh, where, you know, they had the Japanese young Japanese ladies taking care of the children. So the teacher doesn't have to do any of that. The teacher just does the teaching, and the and the young ladies take care of all of, all of the children. Yeah. That was I, I thought God is you know, <laughs> what a great way to you know to take care of education. <laughs> yeah. So, that's true. Yes. Sounds very good. That's very true. Yeah. And so I would go to um, the library and pick out the books where the kids could act out various scenarios, you know. And so mm -hmm. I had a good time. I did that. That was very nice. And the kids loved it. So that's what we did. We went there for re for the summer. And then we came back and lived in Berkeley more. And 
Oh uh, yeah. Then, uh, but uh, in the, in in those when we came back, I would drive to San Francisco in the morning. Not every day, but most days, because we Suzuki mm-hmm. Roshi uh, had students in Berkeley, and so yeah. the a. Um, um, uh, the zazen would be in various people's houses, right, for a while, mm-hmm. and then they would go to somebody else's house and somebody else. He wanted a place where where we could establish something. <clears throat> so, and I remember I used to pick up people and go to Sokoji for the for yeah. zazen in the morning, you know, and. Yeah. Uh, we go there in four and nine days, you know, and not forgetting that it was a four and nine day because the Zendo was oh, closed yeah. on four and nine days. And Suzuki would just yeah. stick his head out the window and say, sorry, you know. <laughs> anyway. Um, hey, I have a question about that. Yeah. Uh, that seems so weird because that, that ended. Uh, that That didn't continue. I don't, I don't. They weren't doing that when I got there in '66. But I, I've heard people talk about that earlier. But yeah. that's so strange because you've also got the weekend. Yeah. So how did that work out? Well, Saturday morning. Saturday well, morning. Well, what if it was a four or nine day? Oh, I see. Oh, well, every Saturday, and <laughs> four or nine days were for the week. And Saturday was always Saturday. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. How, I don't so, know what the what the periodicity of it was, but that's the way it was. And then Sunday, if Sunday was well, not a four and nine day, would you go sit? No, no. Sunday was. We, nobody did anything on Sunday. Well, yeah. So you have four and nine days, not Saturday. Four and nine days during the week. During the week. If they fill if they fill in a so four weird. nine day during the week, because uh-huh. yeah, that's what it was. It had to be uh, okay because we okay. said we said every Saturday morning. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's strange. Yeah, so uh-huh. um, let's see. Uh, so Suzuki Roshi asked me if I would. Uh, find a place in, in Berkeley uh, that was, you know, p- fairly permanent. Yeah. So I did. I found a place on Dwight Way and, uh, you know, built it up. And he was just encouraged me to do whatever I wanted. We we started sitting. We'd sit in the morning, and then I'd ask him, can we sit in the afternoon? He said, yeah, do whatever you want. So I, you know, I developed a place on Dwight Way. It was a great place, big, you know, high ceilings, uh, uh, ten foot ceilings, <laughs> and then a place downstairs. And um, and I had that whole huge yard where I created an organic garden, and it was the beginning of the organic gardening movement. You and mean you personally created the whole organic gardening movement? No, no, it was it was the beginning of that. Oh, I didn't uh, start it. <laughs> I didn't start it. No, no, no. no, but it was the beginning of, of, the, of the organic gardening movement, and I joined in. So yeah, yeah. that is great. I, yeah. But listen, I have another question. So the first, pl- I mean, I was over there. I went over there. The yeah. first place that you got was the one. That had the home owned by the man in the wheelchair, right? Yeah, I know he didn't own it. He was just a, a tenant. He lived downstairs. He was a tenant. Yeah. He lived downstairs. Well, how come you were sitting downstairs early we, on before you went upstairs? When I said no. Downstairs? Okay, here, there are two stories, right? Plus the attic. So when oh. I, so the attic it was not. I didn't call that a story. That was just the, the attic. Oh. So there was a I downstairs. See. And, a, and an upstairs, which is and the upstairs was on the level, more or less. Downstairs was a kind of a little below level, and then where did you live? Where did uh, you live? In the middle. 
Oh, I see. So sometimes you all sat where you lived on the second floor. So when we started, we all sat in, in the main build in the main floor. And then we uh, Wait we a minute. To... Wait a minute. On the main floor, you mean the first floor? Yeah. That's the bottom but floor. I thought that's where the man in the wheelchair lived. He lived in the basement. Let's call it the basement. Oh. The basement floor, the main floor, and the attic. Oh. Okay, I got it. Right. And so, you lived yeah. on the main floor? We lived on the main floor. That was where the Zendo was. Before yeah, we? we moved into who's the attic. We? Huh? Who's we? Well, this is a Zen student. Oh, there were other Zen students living there. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> when, the, when the wheelchair guy moved out, his, when he, I mean, when his wife moved, we took over the, yeah. that, that basement floor. Uh-huh. And then we, um, but before we used the attic for Zendo, we sat yeah. in the main floor. I see. All right. And, and that's, where, that's where the guy sat on uh, India. He thought he was sitting right. on the black cushion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. I've got it. I remember the attic. Yes. And so we, we, we yeah, we did a job on the attic and that became the Zendo. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But we still did, a, did uh, for a long time, we, we did our sashins at uh, Sakoji. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, because, you know, Suzuki Roshi was the teacher, and yeah. uh, we wanted to, you know, practice with him. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 I remember people telling me, like I think uh, Diane Goldschlag yeah. said, when she first went over to Sokoji from Berkeley. She went with you. It might have been with someone else. Yeah, it was with me, yeah. Well, it's with you, right, right. Yeah. Uh, ah, uh, right. and uh, could you remind me what, what was, um, uh, see, I associated uh, Jeannie Campbell and, and uh, Jeannie and Howard Campbell with Berkeley before you got there. Yes, so they, they were, they, uh, Howard and Jeannie were living in her house in Berkeley. Yeah. And uh, Dan showed up, and he was staying with them for a while. Right. And then uh, Jeannie committed suicide. Well, no, no, no. Jeannie committed suicide later. She committed suicide in the early 70s. Yeah, that's right. But that's true. I'm, I'm skipping over in time. Yeah. And then Howard lived with me. In, in at uh, Dwight Way. Oh, oh, okay. That's right. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Uh, but um, I'm trying to remember where we were here. No, you were you you were over uh, just you you're creating the Berkeley. That's Zendo. right. That's so, right. So they were. What you said before that that you you created this permanent space. People would go over there and sit in different houses. So Jeannie and Howard's is one of the places. That's where right. They sat. Yes, for a while. That's, yeah. Yes, that's right. I see. Yeah. I see. And um, so uh, you're sitting over there, and what happened next? <coughs> well, um, uh, so I built up a sangha, you know. And I, yeah. I spent my my ideal was sit zazen in the morning, work in the garden in the after all day. Um, uh, I, I collected a library. I had people give me books, which I turned into mo's for credit, and I got all these Buddhist books. I educated myself <laughs> with all these Buddhist yeah. books, and then and we got a and a really incredible library 
it's not big, but it's got a lot of good stuff. Anyway, mm. uh, that was one of the things I did during the day. And then I got, you know, I would just give zazen instruction and talk to people, and we'd have zazen in the morning and the evening, and and but we wanted to have our own place. And yeah. we wanted to buy the place from this guy. His name was Johns. He was from the uh, Alabama or someplace, maybe mm-hmm. no, from North Carolina, I think. And he w- he taught he taught the new math. He invented a certain kind of math called new math. Uh huh. And uh, he kept stringing us along. When we wanted to first buy the place, the comparables were like forty five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't have any money, but he, uh, he wanted to, he didn't want to, he, he just kept stringing, he liked us, <coughs> but he just kept stringing us along. And uh, when um, uh, Reagan was, became president, and then there was this big crash, uh, it was like, um, uh, you know, I can't remember the year exactly, but it was the year of the big crash in Reagan's time, and housing, uh, the price of housing went way, way up, really fast, and that was the escalation period, when it's when when housing started rising like crazy, and the whole economy was you know, totally changed, mm-hmm. uh, and everything started to become expensive. Are you sure the word crash is the word you want to use? There? No, no. Uh, it, it was... Um, it was a bubble. Op- OPEC. Uh-huh. O- oh, yeah. It, 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 OPEC did, did something. <laughs> they raised the price of oil. Oh, yeah. The price of oil yeah. shot up, right? And so did everything else. Oh, no. I see. Yeah. So... Uh, we started collecting money, but, you know, and it was very, very little money. And I would ride my bicycle around all over the flatlands of Berkeley looking for a place for us to buy because we wanted to have our yeah. own place where we could do what we wanted, right? And he yeah. would, he, he kept, just kept stringing us along and he never would sell it. And so I realized that he was not going to do that. So I rode my bike every day in and day out <laughs> all over Berkeley. Of course, there was nothing because Berkeley is such a tight place. But there was a woman who was a nurse who was a member, and she knew this guy who had this place on you, Russell Street. Do you remember her name? I don't remember her name, no. All right. Uh, and she uh, four houses. And she said that the, the owner was her friend, and he was was – Wanted to get out from under it, and he would he, he would be happy to sell it to us. So we did a lot of fundraising, incredible fundraising. But you know we've always been at a grassroots place. We don't go around asking rich people for money. <laughs> it's never worked for us. Um, but so the members donated the money, you know, and loaned us money, gave us loans and. And gifts and, and all that, and we, the the owner, um, had had a loan from the bank. And at that time, yeah. at that time, uh, you could have a uh, somebody else buy the property from you, and and the. Uh, and the uh, you'd be paying the bank, but yeah. the bank stopped that as soon as when when we were uh, um, negotiating with this guy, the bank stopped doing that. So you couldn't buy it from the owner himself. You'd have to buy it from the bank. So, yeah. And so, and being a nothing, you know. Organization, <laughs> you know, the bank's not going to loan us the money, right? And yeah. they don't like to do that with churches anyway, because uh, it's bad 
publicity for them to close, to foreclose on a on a church. Oh, good point. Yes, and so but so the owner sold it to us anyway, without the bank knowing. Mm-hmm. And, oh. Huh. Yeah. So. That's sort of hard to do. Well, it's not hard to do, but it's not kosher. <laughs> oh. Huh. So we we kept paying him, but he kept paying the bank for the mortgage. Oh, I see. I see. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, uh, but we had the mortgage. I don't know. It's, it's complicated. It's terribly complicated. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. I understand. Yeah. So, um, well, the bank actually found out about it uh, way down the <laughs> line after we've been doing this for 15 years or something, right? And so they renegotiated the the mortgage, and we had to pay like 13 percent or something <laughs> uh, in mortgage, um, in uh, whatever you call it. Payments. Oh, I remember those high interest rates. Yeah, high interest rates. Like I couldn't believe it that when interest rates are down to three <laughs> percent. You know, I I loaned Zen Center money, and I didn't even ask for interest, and they were paying me interest like that. Wow. Uh, so uh, I didn't complain. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Well, um, <laughs> uh, some people loaned us money uh, without. Um, uh, uh, without their loans being secured. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, anyway, um, you know, we we did bake sales. We we went to um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zen Center. You know, we worked we worked at the bakery at night, making brownies and cookies. And selling wow. them at fairs. Wow. We did all kinds Gee. of, we did, you know, yeah, like uh, all kinds of hokey ways. Of, <laughs> but, you know. That's amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. It actually was amazing. But, you know, when you have Gee. that kind of effort, it really energizes people. Yeah. And so that kind of stuff was mostly to get people energized, you know, and, and contributing and uh, in, um, inspires people to, you know, put their money in there. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, we finally made enough for a down payment. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had nothing, you know. Actually, started how, with how nothing. Long, how long did that take from when you started? You said you were talking about 15 years. Well, you know, we bought this place in 1967. Yeah. When did you make that down payment you're talking about? 67. Oh. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So how long were you doing bank sales and raising money and all that? Oh, a year or something like that. That's pretty quick, Mel. But, but, oh, I see. That's to get going, and then you started paying him regularly. Yes. Okay, I see. Yeah. Okay. Because once we were in, you know, the we we had a place for eight tenants, and the tenants were paying rent, and the rent, oh, yeah. and the rent was paying the mortgage. I, I have a question here. Did you buy four houses? Yeah. Wow. Two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't buy a doghouse there now for that. <laughs> that's great. Yep. Yep. And that's the same place where you are now. Yes. No, no. I love it. There. Yes, I it's the same it. place that we are now. I'm sorry. It's, so 67 it's was 67 was the right way we were renting, and so 80 something. 
it was when we moved 12 years later. So uh, 67, 77, 78. 78 was when we moved into Russell Street and where we are now. That's right. Not 67. Oh, okay. 67 was Dwight Way where we were renting. 12 years later, we moved into Russell Street where we are now, the four houses. But you, you, you were raising the money for Russell Street from 67. Well, not no, probably from a couple of years before that. Before we moved. We oh. weren't raising money all that time, no. <coughs> we only started raising money when when we, I said, uh, let's find a place of our own. And that was a couple of years before we moved. So, so that, that was more like 76. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So you made the down payment on it in more like 77. Something like that. 78. Yeah, 77. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. And you moved in 70, there in 78. Uh, 78, yeah, 78. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. Well, I love it there. I th it's got a very cozy uh, feeling. It's like a little enclave. Yeah. It's really neat. Yeah. My, it's one of my favorite Zen places. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Might be my favorite one. Yeah, it's my favorite. The L.A. Zen Center has a, a, like an enclave type feeling. Well, uh, you know, my Zoomies. Yeah, and it was yeah. Um, you know, they owned the whole block. You know. Uh, do they still own the whole block? No, they, I mean the, the the changes that are going on down there are just you know everything's different. Uh, yeah. Because they had the Mountain Center that they started and. Uh, and uh, they owned the whole block. I mean, all the way around. I remember that. I re yeah. But they've they've got a nice little enclave now. It's still going. Well, yeah. Uh, Egyoku is is the right. Abbas, right. right. I stayed there. I was their guest. Yeah, she's done a good job. She, I think, she wants to retire, but she she did a good job of. And Bernie just abandoned it. Bernie had his own ideas about you know. He, he was more of an entrepreneur. Yeah. He was an entrepreneur, and he wanted to start things and then go from, you know, he starts something and then move on. That was his yeah. shtick. And yeah. yeah. I was really disappointed in him when he just broke up the family. Uh, what, what family? You mean the... Well, you know, they... they um, uh, like uh, Dido and Gempo and uh, Jan and all these people were, you know, Suzuki Roshi's disciples. And no, then no, my Zoomies. My, my Zoomies, Zoomies, disciples. <laughs> Zoomies disciples. And um, uh, I thought that they would continue, you know, to... Uh. But uh, he separated all the, all the places, you know, and made each one independent. And then, and he went, he was doing this thing in Brooklyn where. Right, the, right. Yeah, and that was his interest. His interest, and he got, you know, I think he was disillusioned by several things, by my Zoomy for one, who had so many problems. <coughs> and by um, the, 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 the Soto Shoe. Oh, he's disappointed with the Soto shoe. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, who wouldn't be, right? Well, what, what, I mean, I like individuals in the Soto shoe. Yes. I have a lot of respect for a lot of them. But yeah. when I think Soto shoe, I just think, I just know that Suzuki Roshi never wanted us to have any official tie to them. Right. And, but people like to, people gravitate toward that, you know, that whole thing yeah. I notice it like gives them a sort of uh, stamp of uh, approval or yes. something I man I don't feel that what Dick Baker certainly doesn't yeah. but I like indiv a lot of individuals well that's you know um, yeah. yeah go on well that's, that's always been been my attitude I worked with them for 
25 years or something, you know, trying to get something, <laughs> you know, and, and my whole goal was just to get, let's, why can't we just do, you know, be friendly or something, you know, yeah. uh, and help each other that way instead of you be the boss, you know, they always want to be the boss. And, right, but well, they, that's why you can't deal with them. No, I mean, you can't deal with you them. You can just be friendly. You can yes. just be friendly. That, yeah, that's... There's, yeah, yeah so, you can't... There can never be a moment where they can be boss. Well, you know, uh, we can never really be Japanese. That's right. So you can't... <laughs> you can't... You, you, <laughs> yeah. It's you know, all mixed you up with... You can't be Japanese. <laughs> that's right. It's all mixed up with... Nationalism. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, it's it's you know uh, it's, it's very chauvinistic, and yeah. we we would start you know making some progress, and as soon as they realized that we weren't Japanese, oh wait a minute, they're not Japanese, you know, and and so everything yeah. they just throw all these roadblocks in our way. Yeah, you know what I I said the secret. To Japan, I always enjoyed myself in Japan. I never had any problem. Yeah. But the reason is, and I knew a lot of people that had a really big problem. They were trying to be Japanese. Yes. The secret with enjoying Japan, getting along, living there, and blending into a great sense is to remain a guest. Yep. That's right. Then you get. I treated. mean, you can practice with them. You can get diligent and learn the martial arts or the crafts or shodo or zazen or you can be in business, anything, yep. but you're not Japanese. That's and right. yeah. as long as you don't want to try to be Japanese, no problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I always get along with individuals, you know, very well. Yeah. And uh, so a lot of people I like a lot, but... Um, I never wanted, you know, as soon as you, you 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 start getting into where's the line between guest and host, <laughs> uh, yeah. it gets very, very uh, tricky because it's, it's like the dance of the seven veils. Like, yeah. you know, they, they're, they're hiding behind the seventh veil and they take off one or two in order to, you know, be friendly. But the last veil doesn't ever comes down. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's their right. They can do that. They've got a culture that's that right. is held together extremely well. Yep. Uh, and I think the reason it's held together, or one reason that I perceive, and I'm no expert, is that they don't homogenize. They. They bring foreign words into their language. Right. You can see exactly which words they are. They're written in another uh, kana. They're written in, in katakana. Uh -huh. uh, so when they bring things in, they're in quotes. You know what I mean? In a right. sense. And, yes. and you, can see, you can see what's Chinese even. What came in that's Chinese? Right. What was originally Japanese? Right. What's, uh, what's Western? Uh, and they have a very, I can remember Japanese saying, nothing is really ours. Everything comes from somewhere else. Or, you know, who are we? I say, True. I say, oh, good Lord, you know, <laughs> you've got more to be proud of that's yes. Japanese than most cultures do. It's so tight. Uh, it's so tight. I mean, even if you, like the kids leave, you know, for a year and then they can't come, they come back and they're foreigners. Well, that, that's, that's the thing I would hear, hear 30 years ago or something. I, I, wonder, I, 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 that, I don't think that's still true, is it? Well, you know, things take a long time to change. But yeah. uh, I think it's somewhat true. Probably not the way it used to be. Also, you know, the monasteries, you know, if, if you didn't pledge yourself for life, you know, you, you were excluded. Um, but You're a quitter. You're yeah. a quit. if you if you're there ten years and you leave, you're a quitter. Yes, yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, so it's you know the, um, they don't want anybody disrupting their community. Um, 
I, I would like to say something on uh, behalf of uh, Shoto Harada. You know, Shoto Harada Roshi. Right. Uh, I lived next door to his Sogenji for uh, four years. Right. And um, his Japanese monks, he had two Japanese monks and two Japanese nuns there. Uh -huh. They eventually left because he fully accepted Westerners. Yes. And they felt that they couldn't practice real Zen because yes. it was being deluded. <laughs> That's but right. I have a lot of respect for him. Yes. So, again, we find individuals, and Japan is full of eccentrics and exceptions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, and that, that's who a lot of our friends are who are Japanese. Yeah, that's right. And Suzuki Roshi, you know, was totally uh, renegade as far as that yeah, goes. Yeah, he was. He yeah. was. Yeah. He was, indeed. Wow. Um, so, uh, so, you, oh, so, you know, mm. like uh, Lou Richmond, you know, yeah, uh, he's alienated. He was alienated from San Francisco, <clears throat> and also from Japan. But he called. Why? He Why? said, "This is not. Why? This is not the Soto school. <clears throat> this is the Suzuki school." Wait, wait. Who said that? Where? When? Lou Richmond. He said, "Our school is the Suzuki school. It's not the Soto oh, school." Oh, I see. Yeah. So he. Sees his lineage, his lineage is coming from, well, of course, through me, uh, but from uh, Suzuki. Rather, than, and and he doesn't care about Suzuki's background. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Well, that's his right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care what people do. Yeah. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't believe in any one way or anything. You know. I know. Uh, Lou wants to do it that way. That works for him. Fine, huh? Yep. 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 Uh, and uh, you know, different people have. Uh, I I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, I you know I appreciate him thinking that. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that. I don't think either one. I mean, I don't know what I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, better than not, maybe better than not, not solidify something and then have to right. defend it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I, I like that. My, my, uh, my uh, hero that, that uh, my life is modeled after is Alfred E. Newman. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. What? Me worry? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have similar feelings. Like I just, I do not worry. Even when I was abbot at San Francisco Zen Center, I didn't worry about the Zen Center. I just yeah, good. I, I didn't, I, and so they didn't give me a lot of responsibilities that <laughs> that would cause me to worry. But uh, I just didn't worry about it. Yeah, well, that's good. That's the way an abbot should be. Uh, I, I uh, on some occasions, have seen abbots of Zinsen are being used to make, like, fundraising pitches. That's so right. I, don't, I didn't like seeing that. I didn't think that was th they should do that. I, yeah. You know I what know. I mean? I do. I do. Even in Berkeley, yeah. you know, I, I never worried about it. I've never, we've never yeah. had a problem because we never worried about it. <laughs> well... You know, the, the Zen centers in a, uh, I mean, I don't know what um, your situation is, but it's smaller yeah. and uh, I think probably more manageable. The Zen center, what I've been worried about them with is getting too top heavy. Of course. Uh, and having too many expenses. And they get into things with, I've seen, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, th th their their uh, stinginess with uh, preserving the archive gave me a career. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, which uh, I don't criticize them for it. I mean, if they'd done what I would say that Zen Center should have done, uh, well, I'd be on Market Street with a tin cup. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, the... Uh, but. You know, I'd see that, and and you know, uh, some of the 
stuff I did, you know, I'd say, you know, we should do something at so and so. Uh, they'd say, well, there's no money in the budget for that. I'd said, I'll pay for it. And yeah. they'd say, oh, okay. You know, and it, that had to be the right person. That was, a, you know, uh -huh. like I got uh, everything uh, digitized by, you know, really by hook or crook. Right. Uh, by, but it couldn't come out of their budget. But at the yeah. same time, really, I'd hear they were spending this enormous amount of money hiring a branding agency or uh, paying lawyers, paying, uh, you know, I never paid. I'm, I'm, of course, you know, I was in the earlier, smaller days, but when I was doing things for Zen Center, I never paid anybody. I'd, I'd give them bread. Uh -huh. uh, right. <laughs> but that. we were smaller in the earlier days, so, you know, I, yeah. I guess the way we did things earlier on couldn't continue. No, that's right. And that this is what um, uh, Ananda was always complaining about. You know, Ananda liked the, the nice cozy early Sokoji, you know, and he he could not relate to Sokoji after Suzuki Roshi. Well, he couldn't relate to the Sokoji uh, with Suzuki Roshi <laughs> in the true. latter years. Yeah, he he wanted the. He was one of the people who he felt betrayed by Suzuki because Suzuki allowed Zen Center to get big. And I did not sympathize with Ananda on that, but I sympathized with him as a human being. And yeah. I stayed close with him right until he died. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the whole thing, uh, that, that was a whole nostalgia trip to me, the early students, some of the early students clinging to the, the coffee clatch period, yes, where they could have breakfast with him That's in, right. in the kitchen, and it was it was so intimate and close and wonderful, and you know Suzuki would say he didn't want it to get bigger, but it got bigger, and he sort of yes. you know I mean he wasn't he wasn't direct things just happened, but That's right. you know I, I did not sympathize with Ananda uh, who was Claude back at that Claude, time yeah. early I, when he started being that. Saying yeah. that, uh, I thought, what? You don't think he wants more students? You don't think he wants to establish? Uh, right. you, you know, yes, you need he can't to have keep... a certain amount of stuff to establish it so it'll continue. You can't keep uh, them all to yourself. Yeah, I mean, Nyogen Senzaki, he, you know, that's his. He 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 admires. Yeah. Uh, Nyogen Senzaki and D.T. Suzuki. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the D.T. Suzuki, that's something else. I mean, to me, he was just a scholar. Right. And, and uh, you know, a great, a great scholar to be admired. But Nyogen Senzaki, he was starting these early, early Zazen yep. groups, the floating Zendo in California and L.A. Yep. But he didn't create anything that could continue. No. That's right. Well, Suzuki had a place. Suzuki Roshi had a place and a function. And... Uh, he didn't start anything. People, he didn't do anything. You know, my contention is Suzuki Roshi didn't. People say, well, Suzuki Roshi started Zen Center and all this. I don't think so. His students did all the work. That's right. He didn't do. He didn't. You know, he said, okay, I, and he watched every how what people were doing. He was interested. He, and he was a teacher, but he did not. He didn't say you should do this and you should do that. He never said do this, do that. People w would want to do something. He'd say, "Go ahead. You know, let's see what happens." So yeah, yeah, it was, it was very good that way because he was not attached to anything. He said, "If we lose Tassahara, that's okay. We'll do something else. We'll sit someplace else." Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he was very happy to have Tassahara. Of course, to have I mean, it, there's, yes. there's two sides. There's two sides to this. That's one side. And, and you're going to have that. That's sort of the emptiness side. But there, there's the forum side where he really wanted it to survive and do well. And yeah. and he wanted the, you know, he sure. wanted the Berkeley Zendo to have a permanent place. But yeah. again, I, I agree. Uh, the, he, he, It was amazing how little he did and how much happened, happened around him. That's right. Yes. Uh, and it was because of the people that gravitated to him and it was, it was like magic. It was. Uh, and it, it and, and he was nothing without <laughs> the people who came to him. Oh, I mean, he was 
a good person, uh -huh. but um, he needed them. Yeah. He, he longed for them. That's why he came to America. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's getting to be late at 11, so um, I'm happy to talk, but not but we uh, to have another call and, and to continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. This is a good length. Yeah. Uh, it's it's um, terrific. It's true. No, no, that's true. It's good. Look, it's one fifteen in the morning here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really enjoyed uh, our talk. Yeah. Uh, anyway, very good. Uh, yeah. So. You can get up and go to your garden. <laughs> well, I have another meeting to go to. <laughs> okay, Mel. Uh, thank you very, very much. Give, okay. Give my love to Liz. Okay. And, um, so call me again when uh, you're ready. Yeah, I'll call you in a few weeks okay. or something. Okay, good. Yeah, terrific. Thank you. That was great. Good. All right. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So that's it for today's phone chat. Thanks a lot, Mel. That was great. This is DC, Poobav Cuke Audio and Cuke Archive encouraging you to click on the donate link near the top and bottom of the home page of cuke.com, c-u-k-e.com. Uh, there's also uh, a donate link on the Cuke Audio Podbean page. And on that page, you'll discover that it's very easy to send a check or Make a contribution through PayPal, including becoming a subscriber, which you can do for as little as $1 a month. So, till next time, this is DC with Doggett Bandita and Feline Cuchita, but without dear lovely... Katrinka, who might come here in a month. She might be able to make it here then. Wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening.